So it's a little mystery, but definitely not evidence of a ferry. What I have laid out below me is the real deal, however, and it's what you should be looking for if you want to find signs of fairy habitation in your own backyard. I'd like to show you physical proof of fairies. Things that you yourself can look for in your own yard. It's right up ahead here in the driveway of all places. Definitive physical proof of the existence of fairies. Fairy scat, fairy dung, I don't know what it's called. It's not fresh, so she must be long gone. It is very rare to find this kind of evidence and really surprising to find it so close to our house. It's a very large deposit, especially for such a small fairy. The poor little thing must have had something wrong with her stomach. Oh, shenanigan. There you are. How can you be so rude? You know that isn't my poop. Well, I suppose it doesn't glow in the dark or smell like cinnamon toast. If you must know, my poop is invisible and it doesn't smell. That bit I did a few videos back about the fairy scat was pretty funny but realistically trying to find fairy poop is probably just it's just going to be a little too difficult i thought i was onto something a few weeks ago when we had that late dusting of snow i have been on the lookout for physical traces of the fairy that i can share with you we just had some snow, and I thought maybe I could catch some ferry tracks for you. Take a look at this. Unfortunately, this isn't a ferry track, it's just a bird. I'll have to keep my eyes peeled and keep looking for you. Fairies are shy. I tried to get an audio recording of Shenanigan at night when she might have been a little less on guard about being overseen or overheard. Were those frogs just doing their early spring thing in our backyard? Or was shenanigan provoking them into some kind of frog chorus?
so silly. What are you doing? Hey, hey. Rated content. Just has to see what's going on. Just a second ago, I came across what's known as a fairy egg, regular size egg, fairy egg. It's not really a fairy egg. For some reason, they just call them that. These are normal chicken eggs. Just for one reason or another, they're a little too small. Usually, it indicates a brand new chicken that's laying eggs for the first time. I'm not sure what the case is for us, because we don't have any brand new chickens that would be laying eggs for the first time. So it's a little mystery, but definitely, not evidence of a fairy. What I have laid out below me is the real deal, however, and it's what you should be looking for if you want to find signs of fairy habitation in your own backyard. A circle of mushrooms is known as a fairy ring. Now this one has come and gone many times, and right now it's incomplete. For some reason, the mushrooms on that back side over there just haven't sprouted. The mushrooms are a little hard to see because they're small and they kind of blend in with the bark mulch. So I've laid out the bricks to give you a rough idea of the shape and the size of this circle. Here's a closer look. Some say fairy rings are good luck. Others think they're a bad omen. I'm thinking it just depends on how friendly the local fairies happen to be. This ring is incomplete at the moment. It is, however, quite large. I just measured it and it's eight feet in diameter. That is a lot of space for little tiny fairies. We'll ask Shenanigan, our own resident forest fairy, what she thinks about this ring and why it was put here. Shenanigan, are you out here? Shenanigan, I've got a question for you if you have a moment. What can you tell me about this fairy ring in particular and fairy rings in general? She says, just because a space is enchanting doesn't necessarily mean it's actually enchanted. Evidently, fairy rings are a natural phenomenon that fairies will just either take advantage of when they come across or try to nurture along or plant intentionally. It all starts with just a single mushroom in the middle. And when it dies, 
the roots or whatever they're called continue to spread out in all directions and then the next layer is a little bigger and when those die the roots again continue to spread out so that essentially what you have is a very active outer ring with a lot of mushrooms for some reason fairies find this very fascinating and they're very much attracted to these mushrooms shenanigan i've heard that if humans step inside a fairy ring they can get trapped and then they might be transported to the fairy realm where they'll be forced to dance with the fairies for the rest of their lives. Shenanigan says she'd never let that happen to me. And it's been a very, very long time since she's heard of it actually happening to anybody else. What are these fairy rings used for? She says they're gathering places. Fairies can get together and have ceremonies or just hang out with each other. They can also be portals. Each individual mushroom can be assigned a different destination and the fairies can travel to and from there instantly. Why in the world, Shenanigan, would you put a fairy circle so close to our chicken coop? That was my bad. I accidentally built the chicken coop a few years ago a little too close to this fairy circle that was already here why is this ring incomplete my bad again i guess she says it's surprising there are any mushrooms left at all with as much walking back and forth as i do out here and all the chipping and shredding is the magic broken if somebody walks on these mushrooms? She says that it's not as pretty, but what gives life to these mushrooms is still alive down under the surface. Maybe I'll tempt fate and just see what happens if I step inside the ring. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> she says I might have to be her everlasting love slave. I'm not sure I really believe that. And even if it were true, that doesn't really sound all that bad to me. Okay. Nothing yet. I was kind of expecting the urge to dance. You know, like, when you're listening to the radio in the shower and suddenly a Bee Gees song comes on. Wait, I'm starting to feel something. Wow. How, how long was that shenanigan? It seemed like a lot longer than that to me. I was still right here. I was I was existing in the moments between the moments that we can normally perceive. That's the that's the best way I can describe it. Reality is a little more flexible on that other side. Light seemed to flow like water. All this green that you can see around me I could perceive red wavelengths splashing across that surface before it would get sucked up like, a, like an absorbent sponge. All of the colors were shifting. It was like using the slider tool on Photoshop. All those colors changed based on which wavelengths of light I was trying to pay attention to. I couldn't see any brand new colors that would have been pretty cool so my my biological perception range didn't seem to be altered this experience gives me a new appreciation for some of shenanigans behavior a lot of the time when I see her she's 
kind of just sort of floating off in her own world, distracted. I thought she was just daydreaming or maybe a little unfocused. But living in the fairy realm, there's just so much more to be aware of. It's really something. Thank you, shenanigan. Well, for bringing me back safe and relatively quickly. Yeah, I did like it. What? You mean you weren't kidding about fulfilling my love slave obligations? And you want me to do what to you? Well, that sounds innocent enough. Okay, but first you have to come into the ring with me.